I'm Laura. And I'm Caroline. And we're um, on the Green Five team, um, which is a project about green transportation. Um, this is a picture of us and our teammates, Sophia and UK. And we met every week via FaceTime to update each other on our project. Um, this is kind of a general overview of our project and also an outline of our presentation. Um, in the discover phase, we learned about the context situation. In the design phase, we talk, we hone in on a problem. In the design phase, we try to find a solution to that problem. And in the deliver phase, we're basically sharing our findings with you guys. So I'll talk first about um, the background and why should we care about track emissions. So we heard it from um, the Go Home team that um, road freight is actually going faster than GDP. And as you all know, GDP is already growing pretty fast in China. So this is a pretty scary image. Um, and trucks, among all transportation modes, actually contribute to most uh, pollution and uh, air pollution, especially particulate matters. Uh, we talked um, a lot. It was, we had this number of 76%. And I guess um, data is a little hard to find when it comes to green freight and green trucks. And so that's why we have like, some discrepancies between the data we have and the data that other groups have. It's very important to understand the stakeholders in the green freight industry. So this diagram is going to show um, on the left side the drivers and the different uh, situations that they can be in. So a driver working for a large company or even a small company will not have the same experience that an owner operator who owns his own truck and has to find his business. So the driver in the large company will have a dispatcher for example, and will benefit from tools to optimize uh, the shipments. Whereas the owner operator has to find his own shipment by himself. And often this leads to inefficiency. So driving with an empty truck from one city to the other, or having only um, a 60% full truck from one city to the other. And I think this is like uh, one of the main problems like for the industry as a whole, but also to talk with truck drivers to give them information and to have a better picture of the industry. So fragmentation is really the problem in China, but also um, to a certain degree in the US, with an average of um, 1.6 trucks per owner in China, and even in the US, only 4% of companies having more than 28 trucks. So again, data um, is really, really hard to uh, find a good um, source of this data, but this shows kind of like a comparison between China and the US because we've um, tried to conduct interviews in China and conduct interviews in the US and try to find some point of comparison. So you can see that um, the fragmentation in China is way bigger than the one in the US with about 6.5 million owner operators against um, 250,000 to up to 300,000, uh, depending on the different sources, um, owner operators in the US. And from here, we'll talk more about the different approach that we took to um, solve this problem and get more information about the trucking industry in both countries. And we will talk more about this. Okay, so we have three questions to guide us in our research. They're how do we get in contact with truck drivers? How do we best help them to reduce their emissions? And how can we communicate about green freight? Um, so we address these questions by conducting user interviews via um, in, in both China and in the US, our Chinese teammates conducted 61 face to face interviews, which is really impressive. Um, and they did this at a logistics center in Beijing. Um, so they organized their findings to be notes, and, um, and that led them to insights which helped them develop the final product. Their key findings were that um, truck drivers really want to be connected with ship. ship shipments to make because they wait a really long time to, um, to before going off of the load. The, they, they can wait up to 72 hours at a logistics center. Um, also, another insight that they found is that there are some pretty much knowledge about green threat practices about how to um, reduce emissions. And um, one of the main ways that truck drivers get information about driving and, and maybe about reducing emissions is from their friends and their networks. Um, this graph here shows that about 74% of truck drivers um, only use their cell phones for calls.
all of these biases. So another insight that our teammates found was that we have to really entice people to use the app because it's not something that they would use already. Um, so we also conducted interviews here. Um, we went to a gas station in Santa Clara, which was really interesting. It had um, stops for normal vehicles as well as trucks. And then we also went to two locations on campus, uh, our area dining hall and Kessner. And it was cool to go to three locations because we got to get in contact with um, different types of truck, truck drivers because there are so many different types. Um, and one of the main things that we found different about the different locations was how busy they were. The gas station was very busy and the wait time there was nine minutes on average. Um, and it was like, it was a very active waiting time. Whereas at Trusseter, there was about one truck per hour, and they would really wait there for a while, like 15 to 45 minutes. Um, and this is in contrast, again, with 72 hour wait that the same, these long, some truck drivers in China have. So that was kind of interesting to see. Uh, so some of our key findings were that um, truck drivers here get a lot of their information from company training. Um, there's extensive company training, especially on the safety team. Um, and then also from past experience. So when we asked them about um, reducing emissions, they often said like there were little tricks they did, like they went in neutral and they were going down until they were smash faster. Um, another insight that we found was that um, people don't really talk about clean driving that much. It's it's not super on the radar, but the, a lot of the trucks that we saw had stickers on them to signify that they had hybrid engines or um that was a sticker. Um, so it's definitely something that like, the legislature recognizes. Um, and then also, um, we found that none of the truck drivers that we talked to use apps for trucking, and they generally get company phones um, that they really just use for um, calling customers and calling the dispatcher. Um, so uh, we also found though, that there were apps that existed especially for truck just for truckers, um, U-Ship, Next, Drivers, and Shippers. And tracker tools is something that uh, shows drivers where like, rest stops, gas stations, and restaurants are. Um, but when we asked truckers about these apps, they said that their GTS systems sort of, that their companies provide them sort of already have all these options, so it would probably not be super useful. Um, but these do exist, and actually, we ship is pretty successful. And I, I don't think we have as much data about truckers. The third step was design. Um, if you remember, our mission was to find a solution to communicate with truck drivers. And our first finding was, it's so fragmented, how can we actually communicate with them? And we had different solutions. One was just to use um, what they're currently using, which is instant messaging, such as WeChat, or to try to build our own app. And our team said to give it a try and see what a good app could be. So what we tried to integrate was the key findings from China, from what the main concerns of Chinese drivers were, and what worked in the US and maybe uh, what could work in China. So the friend's radar in the middle is crucial because that's what truck drivers know how to use right now. So they know how to do instant messaging and they're really interested in knowing what their friends know, um, talking with them, um, sharing information. The shipment finder is kind of the next step. They don't have any experience right now using this kind of app, but they are interested in finding shipments, and you would definitely improve the way that do business today. And the third step is kind of tool and green freight. So right now, they're not really interested um, in green freight practices because they don't directly see how it could help them. But we're trying to like match this with like some information that they're used to having, such as weather forecast or um, gas price, and having kind of a gamification in this, so they can add um, what type of tools they're using, or even if they're not using it right now, what would it, um, what would it change if they added um, a truck dome or any type of um, side screws, for example, any of these technologies. And when you click on it, it tells you, you will save that much gas, and you will actually um, be better than your friends or your colleagues. So our last step, the delivery, is not yet done. We still have to develop the app and test it with drivers. But here, um, we'll talk in the delivery phase of our lesson learned, and we'd like to show a small video um, of Yimi and Sophia and what they took out from the project, and also a video of us, because that way you will have kind of a different perspective. You see us in real, um, like, person, 
but our teammates saw us just as people in the screen, so I think it would be nice for you to see us as well on the screen. Hi, I'm Sophia Ongo. I'm a master's student in the Department of Information Art and Design at Tsinghua University. Hi, I'm Li Hui. I'm a master's student in Interaction Design at Tsinghua University. I think the cooperation with Carla and Laura is very impressive that you didn't end in hard working, which makes our project very small burdens when compared to the different backgrounds and uh, solutions in American. Chinese trucking industries, we give each other advices, share the, the Redux company, and uh, we also did some battery reports together. Um, the whole process is very happy and enjoyable. By working with Laura and Caroline, I learned a lot in this international and multidisciplinary environment. We research and design in China and United States, both from urban design and service design perspective. We have meeting every week to share our findings and thoughts that make our project outcome a joint innovation. And Caroline and Laura are very friendly and professional. I really enjoy working with them. <laughs> 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 Hi, one of my favorite parts of the project was learning about I felt very lucky to work with Julie and Sophia and they like multiple teammates. Um, what I feel like it was getting to know WeChat and exchanging features of Stanford and um, of Beijing. 